Welcome to the Biology 182 lecture series on vertebrates. This video is an introduction to vertebrates and jawless fish. At the end of this video, students should be able to describe the evolutionary characteristics of vertebrates and understand, understand the traits found in jawless fish. Vertebrates are chordates with a backbone. Vertebrates retain all chordate characteristics, so we see them with the nada cord, which is a very flexible rod that supports the body. It's similar to a cartilage um, for support. We see a dorsal hollow nerve cord, which in vertebrates develops into the central nervous system and connects the brain with the spinal cord. We see the pharyngeal gill slits, and these open to the pharynx and can either become gill arches or a jaw and inner ear and other vertebrates. And then the post anal tail. And we see this tail that extends past the anus and it helps provide movement or balance for some organisms. And in others, it becomes a vestigial organ. And um, we see this in some tetrapods and in some amniotes. In addition, vertebrates have a vertebral column and it replaces the nada cord in development and it also protects the nerve cord. We have a cranium which protects the brain and an endoskeleton made of cartilage or of bone. We also see multiple clusters of Hox genes, not just a single set of Hox genes. And we see a diversity in the complex internal organ systems of the organisms that have vertebrae. Some of the chordate features are seen in vertebrates only in embryonic development. So in humans and many other animals, we see the notochord, the dorsal hollow nerve cord, the gill slits, and the postenal tail only in embryonic development. We're not seeing it in adulthood or even oftentimes after birth. Looking at this, we can see as the organisms that are vertebrates are um, following an evolutionary path, and over time, you can see their divergence by uh, synapomorphies. And so the first thing we see from our ancestral vertebrates is this vertebral column, cranium, and endoskeleton forming. And then we see jaws, bony skeleton and lungs coming, lobed fins, and then limbs. Then we see an amniotic egg and then milk and hair. So these innovations over time have led to the major developments in orders that we see throughout the vertebrate classes. Here you can see the main characteristics of the cyclostomata. These are the jawless fish and they don't have appendages or chondrichthys, right? The sharks and skates and rays. They're similar to fish, but they don't have a swim bladder and they have this um, single blood circulation and they internally fertilize, but their, their skeleton's cartilaginous, right? And so there's all these different um, actino, uh, Tergii, these were fish that have an ossified skeleton and they do have a swim bladder normally. So you can see over time, these innovations continue to create a more complex body plan in the organisms. The jawless fish we'll talk about first are the cyclostomata, which means circle mouth. And the first one we're talking about is hagfish. Hagfish is a marine fish that lacks jaws fins and actually doesn't have vertebrae. So this is a highly debated topic and it is believed that these organisms had vertebrae in an ancestor. And one of the characteristics that arrived in the hagfish was the loss of the bony vertebrae. And so they think based on embryonic development that it has a cartilaginous spine and components um, of the cartilaginous spine in its tail and some of the genes to make the vertebral column. So it is believed that it was a secondary loss and that this was to increase flexibility for the organism. They do have a notochord and a cartilaginous skull and they are blind. They have no movable eyes and essentially blind, but they have a very keen sense of smell and they secrete incredibly copious amounts of slime. So you can see here that this is a hypothetical cartilaginous vertebrae. 
and each of the vertebra are on the dorsal and ventral side and there's these collagen um, extracellular matrix proteins that are present. As we go over to the nathostomes or the jawed fish, we can see that it retains these dorsal and ventral um, skeletal pieces of the vertebrae. But if we look at the lampreys, which will be the next organism we talk about, they lose the ventral side and they only retain the dorsal features of these vertebrae. When we go a little farther down, we have the flip of that and they, um, the genus of hagfish, the Eptotratius, they lose the ventral, nope, they lose the dorsal and they keep the ventral ones, which is fascinating that in two separate species, they lose the opposite side of um, the vertebral column, but they retain the cardinalaginous structures and the extracellular matrix proteins that make these structures. Then you can look at another genus of hagfish and that one lost altogether any of the vertebral elements and they also um, repress the precloacal which means before the um, hole that is for excretory and um, reproductive pathways and so when we look at that there may be some vertebral elements after that particular portion of the vertebral column. Then we can see other organisms that are non-vertebrate chordates. They have, just like the mycene, they have no vertebral components um, along their nerve cord. So when we look at the arculia, which is like a primitive cartilage, um, we can see that in the lamprey, it's a dorsal arculia and it surrounds their spinal cord and it also allows the spinal cord to be protected as well as the nerves branching off from the spinal column and then we see the nada cord around it in sharks we see these dorsal arculia but they're different they're cartilaginous and um, they still surround the spinal nerves on the bottom they have a separate um, version, right? They have the calcified centrum and on the bottom they have these ventral arculia and they are more bone-like even though they're cartilaginous. When we look at a verb vertebrate spine that is made of bone though, we can see that there are protuberances sticking out all over and they protect the vertebral column the spinal cord with the vertebral column surrounding it. So it's like a step further from the shark skeleton, right? The cartilaginous bone structure is now calcified and we can see there's still the centrum and there's still um, the same ideas of these arculia. And we can see them in the spine and in the different articular and transverse processes that stick out from the vertebrae themselves. The next organism we look at is another cyclostomata and it's called a lamprey. The lamprey lacks a hinged jaw and any true appendages, but it does have a notochord and it also has a rudimentary vertebral column. It is one of the earliest diverging groups of vertebrates. It's found in both marine and fresh water and often the marine lamprey are parasitic as adults. It's interesting that their teeth form this spiraling going down into their mouth and kind of like the radula of a snail. The ancestral characteristics are cartilaginous vertebrae that we can see still in these lamprey. And they also have a cartilaginous cranium. We're unsure if the lamprey and the hagfish are closer related evolutionarily or if the lamprey is actually closer relation to chondrichthys because of all the cartilage that they still exhibit. Students should be able to identify characteristics of jawless fish or cyclostomes. Students should be able to indicate why hagfish may not be vertebrates. And students should be able to differentiate between chordates and vertebrates.